Hey, scientists. I'm Mr. Crouch. Let's get ready for another over-the-top science lesson. Do you know what causes day and night? Do you know which planet takes 165 years to go around the sun? Well, today we're going to talk about rotation and revolution. All right, let's get started. Okay, astronomers, title a new page, Rotation and Revolution. Capitalize all the important words and underline the title. Uh, rotation and revolution are movements that each planet makes. Uh, rotation is the spinning of a planet on its axis, and revolution is an orbit of a planet around a star. Uh, both of these movements mean very unique things for each planet, and we're going to talk about what it means to planets and what it particularly means to Earth. So let's get started. So let's start with just some basic definitions, and then we'll go more into it. So let's go ahead and skip a line, and we're going to write rotation. And rotation is the spinning of a planet or a moon on its axis. Now, the most important word in this sentence here is spinning. So let's, let's go ahead and bold that word or underline it some way to make it unique in your sentence. All right, the next definition is revolution. And revolution is the path the planet takes as it orbits the sun. And the most important word in that sentence is orbits. So either underline it or bold it or make it a different color. Something to make it really stand out. Because these are words that you really need to know when you're talking about revolution and rotation. Okay, so let's talk about rotation and revolution individually. And we'll start with rotation. So rotation. Skip a line and write rotation. And what is rotation? Well, it's a spinning of a planet on its axis. So I'm going to a picture of Earth here. And what's it doing? It's spinning. All right, so let's draw an axis. That's part of the definition. So let's get that in there. So you see Earth is tilted. Um, so I'm going to put the axis in the top and the bottom of Earth. It's tilted 23 and a half degrees. And that's significant, but we'll talk about that in a future lesson. And let's label it axis. Now, an axis is an imaginary line that goes through a planet or a moon. So let's write that. So we're, we labeled the axis here. And we have a planet. Now, what does rotation do for Earth and for all the planet? Well, rotation causes a planet's day. So it takes one day for a planet to spin one complete turn on its axis. So how long is a day on Earth? Well, it's 24 hours because it takes 24 hours for Earth to spend one time on its axis. So let's bring the sun into the picture. And here we see North America. Since the sun is facing North America, it's daylight in North America. And as it turns away, day goes on, it goes to dusk. And then when North America is on the other side of the sun, it's nighttime. Then it takes a full, it takes 24 total hours for it to come back and face the sun again. Okay, you drew a model up here. Let's make a bulleted list of what we learned from our model. The first thing we learned is it takes one day for a planet to spin one time on its axis. The second thing we learned is it takes Earth 24 hours to spin one time on its axis. Keep in mind that every planet has a different length of day because it takes a different amount of time for it to spin on its axis. For example, Mercury has a much shorter day because it takes a lot shorter of a time for it to complete one rotation on its axis. And the last thing we talked about was rotation causes day and night. So let's put that. Now let's look here. In this sentence I put spin. In this sentence I put rotate. Keep in mind that spin and rotate are the same thing. They can be used interchangeably. So remember, rotate and spin go together. All right, so let's talk more about our sun. Have you ever heard someone say the sun rises in the east and sets in the west? Or we went and we saw the sun rise? Well, we're taught that's true. But the sun is a star, and stars don't move. Look at our model here. Is the sun moving? Is it spinning? No, it's not. It's not doing anything. But here, the Earth is rotating. So 
rotation causes it. The sun doesn't rise in the east. The earth rotates west to east. And therefore, it appears as if the sun is rising. So let's go ahead and write that. So rotation makes it appear as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. All right, so let's talk more about stars, starting with our sun. So when we get up in the morning, if you were to go outside, it would the sun would be rising in the east. Of course, we know it's not actually moving or rising. It's the earth uh, rotating from west to east. Then you go out at noon, and the sun would be directly above your head. Then the earth would rotate a little bit more. In the evening, the sun would be uh, setting in the west. All right, well, the same is true for stars, and nothing is more obvious than with a constellation. So let me bring a constellation out here. This constellation is the Big Dipper. So a constellation is, by the way, a group of stars that form a picture, and this particular one, we're going to call the Big Dipper, and the Big Dipper is the one group of stars at night that look like a spoon. All right, well, the same is true. If you go outside at, say, 7.30 at night and it's dark out, you might see the Big Dipper in the front of your house. And then if you were to go back outside at, say, 1 o'clock in the morning, well, the Earth would spin more. It would spin west to east, and you might see the Big Dipper in your backyard. So it's the exact same idea as the sun. The Earth rotates and now it appears that the constellations move across the night sky. So let's go ahead and write that down as our last bullet for rotation. Okay, we learned that rotation is the time it takes for a planet to spin one time at its axis, and it defines a planet's day. It takes Earth 24 hours to spin one time on its axis. So now let's talk about revolution. Revolution is how long it takes a planet to do one orbit of the sun. So one complete time around the sun is how long a planet's year is. Now Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and it takes 88 days. Earth is the third planet from the sun and it takes 365 days. So every planet's year is different and it depends how long it takes to go around the sun. All right, so let's start taking our notes on revolution now. Skip a line, possibly go to the next page. So revolution. And the definition of revolution is the time it takes a planet to travel one time around the sun. So that determines a planet's year. Now this time, when we talk about traveling around the sun, we use the word orbit. So with revolution, we use orbit. With rotation, we use spin. All right, so a few things, a bulleted list about revolution. It determines a planet's year. We said Mercury took 88 days to get around the sun, to orbit the sun. So 88 days is Mercury's year. 365 days is Earth's year because that's how long it takes Earth to do one complete orbit around the sun. All right. The closer the planet is to the sun, the shorter the orbit. So the shorter the orbit, the shorter the year. The further the planet is from the sun, the longer the year. So just to give you an idea, uh, it takes Earth, again, 365 days. It takes Saturn 29 years to go around the sun. And it takes Neptune, the furthest planet from the sun, 165 years. So you see the correlation. Obviously, the closer you are to the sun, the shorter your orbit, the further you are from the sun, the longer your orbit, the longer your year. Okay, why don't you catch up on these notes and I'll be back with you in a moment. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so let's talk more about the revolution or the orbit. So let me bring out the sun. Now, when you say orbit, it almost sounds like you're talking about a circle. But the, actually, the planets orbit the sun in something more like an oval, which is called an elliptical orbit. And it looks something like this. So it, the planet's path looks like this. Now let me bring Earth out and put it on the orbit. Now to, depending on the position of, the, of Earth in the orbit will cause the different seasons. Oh, that's a, a lesson for another day. But depending where you are in the orbit, the four seasons are caused by the revolution of the Earth around the sun. So let's go ahead and write that in our journal. So causes the, the 
seasons on earth. Go ahead and make a bullet of that. All right, the last thing I want to talk about with revolution and how it affects what constellations you see. Now, before we talked about when you're on earth and you look up at the night sky, see the Big Dipper in the front of your house at 7 p.m. and you may see it in the back of your house at midnight. Now, let's think about revolution or orbit. As the Earth orbits the Sun, it's going to leave the Big Dipper behind. And now when you look into the night sky, you're going to see a different constellation. So then 180 days later, you may look into the night sky and you may see this constellation. And, and as the Earth keeps orbiting around the Sun, the constellation you see at night is going to change. So with revolution, it affects what constellation you see. And with rotation, it makes the constellations appear to move across the night sky. So let's go ahead and put that into our last bit of notes here. Allows you to see different constellations at different times of the year. Okay, it's time for your journal entry. Izzy and her brother Jacob wanted to explain to a class of fourth grader what causes day and night. Jacob decided he would be the sun and made a sign showing he was the sun. Izzy was going to be the earth and she made a sign that she was the earth. Explain how Izzy and Jacob could model the cause of day and night. Question 2. Max and Logan wanted to demonstrate what causes a year on earth. Explain how the two boys could model the cause of the year. So be sure that you use these four words at least one time for both questions. What I mean is you'd use two of the words in question 1 and two of the words in question 2. Obviously, one question is about rotation, and one question is about revolution, and that should be obvious in your answer. It would be great if you could draw a diagram in your journal as well, showing your understanding. All right, go ahead and pause the video and get the question written down, and make sure you answer the question. All right, that does it for today. I hope you learned a lot about rotation and revolution. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please email me at overthetopscience at gmail.com. If you haven't done so already, please click subscribe down below. Really appreciate it. Happy science, everyone.